no dog sold or raised for illegal purposes. This is a historical and entertainment-based channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh yeah. Episode 22, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, ah. Let go, let go. Have the Tango Dogs lost a step? A deeper look into the Paw Paw Dog. A look at champion black pairs and the future. Let us analyze the evidence on this episode of Bulldog Court. 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 Bulldog community, please rise. This is your host, Get a Hold Generals. Because we got to get a hold of the game. Of the game. Of the game. Court is now in session. Oh yeah. Another episode of Bulldog Court. This is your host, Get a Hold James. Because we got to get a hold of the game. I'm so happy that you can jump and join me on this Saturday evening. You could have been anywhere else in the Bulldog Streets, but you're here with me. And I'm so happy that you did. You're under D. Uh, I've been forgetting the last couple of episodes to do this, so I'm going to do this off the tip of the top. Uh, anytime I'm talking about the different cases, I am not the judge nor jury, for it is up to you, the Bulldog community, to decide which way the tide may roll. And I appreciate everybody for checking out last week's episode of Bulldog Court. I appreciate the comments, the commentary back and forth about different things. You know, some people didn't agree with the California Jack, uh, Vernon Jackson story, but hey, I just was going by what I was told. Check it up with Vernon Jackson and, and Jack Kelly. I never heard California Jack deny that he bought a dog from him. But, you know, like I say, people say about talking about Katana, that's cool and all. But whoever said that she didn't come off Katana or that Poncho Jr. didn't come off Katana. But was it off of Poncho, though? When, what Poncho dogs you ever seen bite the way that Sirius could bite or bite the way that Poncho Jr. or Southside Mister could bite? Never heard of it. Never heard of it back then because I was back then and outside. Never heard of it. In, in generations later on that they bit like grizzly bears so you know proof in the pudding though bite me <laughs> but let me get into this first case has tango lost a step let us get into this we're looking at none other than game blood kennel grand champion tango eight time winner and we can see where if you're a lover of Bolio mixed up in different ways or Eli Bolio cut up in different ways, oh man, this is your dog. Oh man, this is your dog. And everything, you know, that was reported about him, you know, I never heard anybody question the legitimacy of this. So we will take it as it is. There was nobody I heard any, any conjecture or objection to uh, the reports. So we will take it for what it's worth. He was that dog. You know what I'm saying? So we're looking at this, we see, and what I mean by that for, for those who may be a novice or greenhorn about Bolio cut up in different ways. If you look at his pedigree, he's Stone City, he's Balls, uh, well, he's Stone City, Bolio through the Toothless Jack stuff on the top. He's Balls some more on the bottom. Uh, uh, you know, all on the bottom with the black pass, the Sean B's justice. If you look at all of that, all of the balls is a, is a, and the black pass is a Eli, pretty much a Eli Bolio Hank blood cross. Then you have all the stone city stuff. And there's a little book sprinkled in the bottom of the pedigree too. So that's also Pat Patrick Bolio stuff. Some people believe Buck really is a, uh, is not a pure Bolio, Bolio dog. But he is in fact uh bully on top, Zebo boomerang on the bottom. I'm cutting this with a barred axe. I heard Fat Bill mention this before. I'm talking about his real pedigree. And you know, if it is, that that made me like it more. I don't know about you, but that made me like it even more. I like Buck even more, you know. I still feed Buck, so I'm not uh, you know, objectifying any of that. 
I do still feed buck dogs. You know what I'm saying? Gaston dogs. So, uh, uh, miss me with the, I'm hating because I actually feed those dogs. So I'm not objecting to any of that. That, like I said, that makes me like them more. I love battle cross dogs. So anyway, getting back to the subject at hand, uh, we looking at the production power we see in, you know, when I look at the pedigrees, I'm just going by pedigrees online. We're not talking about anything underground or as twin would say, uh, 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 night glasses worthy type of stuff. I'm not talking about that. But we talking about, we just, what, just what we see just on the surface level of looking at pairs online. And we know that everything is not on pairs. Everything is not meant for pairs. So, you know, I just want to make that clear also. And so when we look at uh, the Tango Dogs, we seeing that, you know, this, you know, went ahead and there. He did, however, produce a grand champion from the same kennel that came that he came from called grand you know called grand champion old school or Oli for short with a lot of momentum behind this and then there was some type of a controversy as pertaining to who actually had the tango dog and where he was because if i'm not mistaken there was a situation where there was a tango in new jersey then there was a tango in South Carolina. So which one had the real tango? And some people was breeding to the tango in New Jersey. And some people was breeding to the tango in South Carolina. Now, could it be that that tango moved around a bit? Maybe so. Because we have to give both sides of the spectrum when we talk about anything controversial. We try to give both sides and try to look at it from different angles and, and just... You know, like I said at the beginning, it's for the Bulldog community to decide which way the tide may roll. So it's not up to me. I'm just giving different perspectives of what possibly could have happened. The reason why there was some kind of mix up with Tango. And if there is somebody who was counterfeit and impersonating, um, had thinking that they had a dog that looked similar to Tango and misled people to, to breed into that dog, that may be why we don't see enough success with the line that we thought we would see being what his reputation was as a game dog so we know that some years have passed now this is nothing current years have passed and as we look down through the generations you know some of these animals have left out of the united states so we're not you know talking about that so we we just don't know whatever happened to these animals it looked like they lost the step look they lost momentum um, and it may be a possibility it could directly be resulted in the fact that people didn't know which one to breed to. You know, one person saying one thing, another person saying something else. The people that were breeding to the one that might have been the false one was getting dogs that wasn't good. And then it caused to put a, a stain on the bloodline and that dog unjustly. Do you understand what I'm saying? It could have been unjust in the way that people look and analyze his offspring because, in fact, it was not his offspring. These were dogs that were somebody else's mind game and counterfeit ploy or plot. So we have to look at all of these things. I looked down the line. I looked at some grandchildren. You know, I looked down the line and I saw some very tight, you know, some tight stuff bred. You know, I remember a uh, uh, short bus, bull short bus bred to some really, really, you know, good stuff, you know. But like I say, things happen. Some dogs get lost in accidents, you know, things of that nature to where they just don't survive and be able to thrive you know and so but what do you think do you have any insights on the tango blood is this totally a farce and not true the tango blood is dancing and moving and shaking like never before but it's just unbeknownst to many people or is it that the tango blood has lost the step it has lost momentum it has lost interest because of controversy maybe not because of the dog because he was what he was when he was dancing oh man <laughs> oh man he was dancing he did the tango on you 
So in the case of have the Tango Dogs lost a step, this case is now dismissed. We'll get back to the show after these important messages. Check out one of the best dog talk shows out here. Bulldogging with Bo on Dogman TV. Thursdays and Sundays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Shout out to his co-host, Nonstop. Oh, uh, yeah. And for my second case, a deeper look at the pawpaw dog. Uh, when we look at the pawpaw dogs, we're talking about Jay and Granny Squire's pawpaw, P-O-R. This is a double-bred son of Hunter Red. Hunter Red come off, of course, Bailey's Bingo and Marlowe's Peaches. Okay? Um, we got a quarter of Rascal Oso Negro. Those were brothers, supposedly in pedigree. They were brothers. Uh, Dupre's Classy comes off of uh, Dupre's Charlie B, two-time winner, one-time loser. But... Um, we see, you know, this is a red boy, pretty much a red boy. The easiest way to say a red boy rascal, you know, red boy Eli, cross dog. And just looking at his prodigy down the line, you know, we see Hooper's champion solo, four time winner. We see Alabama RMK's Habanero, uh, another champion. Um, we see several ones and two time winners. We see, uh, off of this blood bred back into sometimes the Rodriguez champion Gator, which is the tab Irene stuff. And we see it cross into more rascal. You know, we seen it crossed into a little bit of red boy Jocko, you know, through the yellow strand. We've seen it cross different ways. And just to show you that this hunter red stuff at one time, was producing outstanding animals. Like I say, we have like dogs like Jay Matter and Stash, two time winner, you know, with the Rodriguez Gator stuff on the bottom, you know, um, Max Warrior Princess, but we see with some, you know, with two time winner, like Warrior Princess, two time winner, one time L, you know, they took L's, Matter and Hoopers, Lil Papa, one time winner, one time L, you know, Matter and Peanuts, one time game loser. You know, so I, I can see what matters been was out there. He was out there stepping. I, I see you. I see you. And so we can see where, you know, these dogs were at one time being used heavily. And we just don't know really what happened to some of those other dogs down the line. When we look further down the line, you know, we don't see there was, you know, like I said, there was some latter ones that came like Rockmouth Kennels, Busman, two time winner, one time game loser, you know, with, you know, they bred boy back, like I said, back into more of the rascal blood to make a more of like of a 75 quarter red boy, 75, you know, percent rascal or, or um, also Negro quarter red boy. And that dog was said to be a very, very devastating hard mouth game dog. Um, so there were, there were some in that era, in that time. As time has went on, we've seen less and less of the Papa dogs out here. I don't know whatever happened to them, but you know, they started off in a blaze and a great start. And then, you know, we see, see, um, we seen less of the blood out in about as time has went on. You know, maybe it had, you know, we, we talking about the late nineties here. So 20 some odd, 24 years or whatever, 25 years have passed. So who knows what could have happened with the Papa dogs. I just thought it would be a point of interest to look at this dog and how he's bred and to study the way in which he was bred. Because even though there may not be as many Papa dogs out, of, out here, there are still pure red boy dogs out here. There are still pretty much heavy rascal dogs still out here we still have the blackjack blood there are people who steal the mosley's uh that goes back to the rebel kennel stuff you have uh you know the mountain man homer stuff that's still out here in patches you still have 
uh, some of the Charlie B stuff here and there. You know, that some of the same stuff that made up uh, the Paw Paw dog. So some of these dogs could, in essence, be recreated in a sense. So that if we totally lost Paw Paw in history and for what he was producing at that time, for somebody that might be worth a try to recreate the very essence of what the dog was you see what i'm saying i'm not talking about any anything other than that actual pedigree in percentage the 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 three-quarter red boy quarter rascal or also negro i don't know how much also negro is still out here i don't think it ever was in high quality high quantity even back way back in the 80s and late 70s i don't think it was ever just that but it's certain people that was running rascal bloods like uh rodney um a late the late rodney duprell the late james crenshaw who specialized in this blood and they would run also negro dogs back into um his brother rascal uh blood and then they were outed sometimes with the hides sash bloody sunday you know the, the late Rennie hide blood and uh go to go to war with that so we seeing a pattern here like twin twin don't say pattern he said pattern you know whatever that means <laughs> that's my guy twins shout out to it going hard killer reloaded over there keep doing your thing hope y'all recover from the storm well but like I'm saying, this is just something to, to take a look at as far as something that could be possibly recreated. There could possibly still be some pawpaw dogs still out here. In what degree, I don't know. But I just wanted to take a look at a few of his prodigy and look at the way in which they was bred. And this could possibly give other people who are having the same... Uh, type mix of blood a, a a inkling into what they should be how they should be breeding these dogs if you have a three-quarter uh eli a three-quarter rascal dog you know take it back into the gator blood the uh, rodriguez gator take it back into more uh rascal blood you know uh because that seemed to be successful and and also too i would explore into the red boy jocko you know the red boy rascal Red Boy Jocko, that's to me, you know, you can, um, or, or adding Jeep blood into it, uh, the hardcore strands, another one, you know, but that's just my suggestion. I'm not, you know, the judge nor jury on that. I'm not, I'm not the mad scientist, although at one time I did want to be, but just something I'm looking into. How do you feel about it though? It's, I want to hear your comments. I want to hear your commentary on the subject matter. But for the case of a deeper look at the pawpaw dogs, this case is now dismissed. Oh, uh, yeah. And for my third and final case, a look at Champion Black Pass and the future. We're going to get right into this. I think that SCP's Champion Black Pass Manian needs no introduction. But for those who might need one, there might be a small percentile of people who need an introduction on Black Pass. Black Pass is basically a Aller Junior Balls Dirty Mary cross dog. Uh, a Bolio Hank Eli is the most basic way I can say it, cross dog. He comes from winning dogs and he has produced more than his fair share of winners you look at champion black pass jr you look at champion bad rosemary that you know raised havoc overseas you know and, and, and you know and they had to even put a mail on her to try to stop her you know so that's bad on their behalf but anyway i digress uh champion luther champion nigel champion rage champion apache sean b's boomer uh, uh scp's nasty so as you can see, a plethora of champions and winners and multi-time winners did Black Pass throw. 
uh, through the legendary SCP Kennels. And those dogs were able to go on and be successful and then also produce a lot of those dogs are either registered married themselves or POR themselves. So the lineage continued. And I began to look further and further down the line of the lineage and look at these dogs. And it made me think about the future of this particular strand some people will call it a boys dog. Some people will say, well, you know, it's kind of like more Eli than, than Bully or Balls. You know, you know, just depending on how you want to look at it or what you want to give credits or credit to versus the other. But uh, this particular strand of Balls or the Black Pass strand has produced more winners, in my opinion, with less losses behind it. Okay, if we look at many other ball strands or the balls lines just themselves, a lot of those dogs were champions, but many of them couldn't make it over the hump to grand champion. They would always be a game loser or just flat out lose, you know, the, the, the fifth one or maybe the fourth one. And But they would go on to be able to be potent enough to produce and reproduce themselves uh after that so a lot of those dogs went on to also become registered merit just like the black pass dog but the only difference to me in my opinion is that they have less losses when they were ch either the the people that had them had the wherewithal to not take them any further and just leave them as they were or they were just that good or just that more superior to where you know they 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 just never met a adversary that um, would put them in a predicament where they needed to get picked up or where they would take so much damage because they was busy dishing out damage of their own. Whatever the case may be, uh, I began to look even further into the third and fourth generations and, and I'm seeing less and less productivity, but not still, not a lot of losing. Not a lot of losing. So when I look at this stuff, it, it makes me question, you know, uh, certain things about it, of course. Uh, certain things, of course, we all know are obvious. Uh, we are no longer in, you know, that, that's just not the time we're in. But there are other places abroad in the world that have used those dogs also with tremendous success. And even then, in this case with Bad Rosemary, she had no equal adversary of her own sex. They had to put a male on her to do that. And then they make it like, oh, yeah, she just wasn't enough. She couldn't outlast the male. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. I guess we have a different perspective over here is, you know, you did that because you had no female that was her equal or even she dismantled all of them. So miss me with that, you know. She couldn't outstand the male when the male is probably bigger and more stronger than, you know, but anyway. So I made, it made me look further into the Luther strand. Uh, I just picked one particular strand to look at, which was the Luther strand, STP's champion or uh, uh, STP's Luther. And so I began to go down his lineage and he produced a lot of winners. And then I came across Mel Kent's Little Luther. Um, you know, the ablazing Dominique ablazing. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, rest in peace to him. But he was able to acquire those animals and take those animals and breed into some other bullion strands that he had acquired from America and uh, make a formidable strands, make some pretty good dogs. So those dogs end up making their way back and I see you know some pedigrees that I'm gonna put up in more recent times where people are going heavier they're using the uh, some of them are using I think the tally jack I think some of that stuff uh, tally jack pass I'm just you know just looking at random stuff that I came across with the black pass some of it had the heavy Chop Chop, BB Red, Banjo type stuff in the handicap blood. Some of it I would see more, even more recently was Heavy Luther with um, the uh, Piercios or, or the Invicto strand of Bolio, Ambos type stuff 
mixed in with just a quarter of it, you know, you know, with some more Eli or with some some banjo. So I'm just noticing that, you know, people are going heavy on it. But what are your thoughts about this strand? Do you know any other strands of the Bulls line that didn't take very many losses or that produced in the number as great as that? And we know um, I've already covered on the champion, the Scooters champion Emmett Dog, and how his progeny has moved along in succession um, in producing power uh, over the years. So this is just one other. I don't know if it adds up to the same number like a champion Emmett. He's just exceptional as his offspring has been able to continue and his progeny continues to produce but what do you say about this blood uh does it need an influx of fresh mayday blood does it need some fresh gaston or buck blood or some stone city to be added to it to bring it back into its full uh, bloom of what it once was does it need uh some some jeep red boy rascal or some scrape red boy cottingham or something just what are your thoughts about this i just thought i would cover this please leave your comments and leave you know your suggestions your ideas of what you think needs to happen if anything you may maybe just you know nothing needs to happen you know it's, it is still doing what it needs to do elsewhere just not in a way that you know people can see that um but whatever the case may be please leave your comments and the case of champion black pass and the future this case is now Dismiss. Oh yeah. Now it's time for my closing monologue. Like I said for time, make your next move your best move, but move strategic, like a chess move. You know the weather's starting to shift, everything's starting to change. You know it's getting a little cool outside at night. Please make sure you do your due diligence to make sure that your animals are nice and cozy for the night so that we don't have any mishaps. Watch out for them brown lacruces because they are on the move. And uh, keep aware of any type of other rodents or pests that might be moving around causing your hounds some harm. But this is your host, Get a Hope James, because we got to get a hold of the game. I'm out. Oh, yeah. And for the person in the back, it's get a hold. H-O-L-D. James. Get a hold. H-O-L-D. James. Not get a hold. H-O-D. Or H-O. Although I have been known that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know. It's to get a hold, because we got to get a hold, H-O-L-D, of the game. I just thought I'd say that, man. I'm out.